What up my freaks, Ruinous Insight here with part 16 of my Total War Warhammer 3 modded Archeon the Ever Chosen campaign. So as we saw last time, the favored of Slanish met upon the field of battle and by a hair's breadth, by a sliver slash as Azel was the victor. Uh, looks like we have two territories remaining to the decadent coast and if we're careful and if somebody namely Wolfric refused to listen to his orders to occupy this and uh, doesn't take it over and we should be able to get Sigvald on the field. So that'll be the goal for this time around plus we have a potential big old fight. Look who appeared right beside Archeon. Tantalizingly so as Tretch has a full stack here plus he's beside his capital at Crookback Mountain which means it'll have a probably pretty decent garrison and frankly Tretch is one of those heroes whose defeat trait I really like and I have been known to farm it periodically I don't remember what the exact trait is but I do remember that it does offer speed for the entire army and I really really like uh, the speed trait it's one of those uh, it's one of those buffs and uh, the word stats rather and that you think is eh, it's all right but uh, it doesn't give you big numbers but in reality it's extremely strong especially as the AI is awful at dealing with mobility and on top of that Archeon's army will be composed of a lot of units of knights and any speed that chaos knights can get will help them as they are some of the uh, slower cavalry units Sans buffs anyway. Anyway, anyway, so we'll be doing that big old fight, but let's see what we've got with Azazel first. Now, I did put to you guys the question as to whether we take uh, the Frozen City or leave it to Harganeth slash subjugate them, and the you guys have spoken, and it seems that we will be taking Harganeth out for good and keeping the stark fortress for ourselves we'll then try to occupy or not occupy vassalize malekith and at the very least eventually once we can march all the way down here towards marathi and the uh, ancient city of quintex now the problem here the big problem is this. Wilfric is moving to nagrar these guys currently have two territories remaining We'll need to move fast enough to take the last territory before Wilfred does. In fact, you know what? Here's what we'll do. You. Aletha, now we're going to declare war on you. He'll probably ask for peace eventually, maybe? Hmm. I actually thought that he would be at war with the uh, with the Tomb Kings near him. Maybe they're not that near, but anyway. Anyway, we'll declare war on him, and hopefully by doing so... Not this time. All right, we can tell Wolfric, since he won't listen to this, what if he listens to this? Occupy the Blacklight Tower. He's already at sea, and he's reasonably close, so just leave Nagrar alone, man. All righty. Then, the way we want to do this is, well, I guess first we'll start without resuming this real quick. And I... Uh, okay, looks like, okay, change of plans, very slight change of plans, looks like one of our units will die. Alright, Jaeger, go and trade Hudakai the Chaos Sorcerer and the Aspiring Champions for a Marauder and, and the Freaks on a Leash. We'll trade them back for the two units of Flamers, but for, for now, we'll use them to auto-resolve. Then what we'll do is we'll send you to Harganeth as fast as possible. To hopefully try to grab it before uh, Wolfric or whoever else is nearby does. I hope there isn't a full stack. Oh, we can't see. Okay, well, hopefully. And then, Azazel, you're going to occupy the Frozen City. Oh, like so, and we will not subjugate it, we will not sack it, because we are looking to maintain it. And that will destroy Harganath. Okay. And, oh, Udakai, you unlocked something, did you? Path to glory, you immediately have partners in chaos. Well, we need to win a battle against Slanish Cats, yeah, probably not happening. Uh, but the Penumbral Pendulum, and your turn with over 80 wins of magic reserves, will be unlocked this turn. Although I suppose if Nakari is alive, we could sail you down there just to get that. I mean, we do want to uh, subjugate him anyway, so yeah, no. Anyway, hey, you sir, or Frozen City, let's immediately build up the... 
raid trophies. We'll immediately build the corpse mound. We'll go for a chaos shrine, both for the money and for the additional chaos sorcerer capacity. And last but not least, the strategy chamber. Would it be useful here? You border Dargoth, which is probably going to be kept by us because of the obsidian. Nagrar will be kept by one of our allies because it's a port territory. Uh, Shagrath will be another port territory. Eh, maybe. Maybe Vassal Emissary will work out here. All right. It looks good to me, and, well, the money doesn't look so good to me, but that's okay. All righty. That's you, Azazel. Uh, Archeon, I guess we're moving you up next, are we? All right. It looks like a pretty big old battle with Mr. Treachery on the field. I... I'm going to assume that he will not run, but there's no guarantee. Uh, we can we can ask to join war of Karazakarak. You gonna make a deal with Archaeon there, Thorgrim? You should probably put yourself in the uh, book for that one. Uh, yeah. 2.5k. Hey, it's 2.5k. We're not turning that down. And, and we'll use this to attack Tretch, like so. And will he run? He will not run. Valiant defeat, really? Archaeon's army, valiant defeat. You know, I don't see that happening, but uh, let's see what we got here. Oh, oh my. Uh, it looks like that's a tier 5 garrison. Huh. Ah, a maxed out garrison. Very nice. He's got six artillery pieces, two doom wheels, a, a hell pit abomination, some death globes and poison winds. One, two, three, four, eight, nine, ten units of storm vermin. Ah, looking pretty good, Tretch. Ah, looking pretty good. I'm very glad I decided to do this. And I'm also very glad that Tretch went nearby because we're going to uh, we're gonna have some fun here. Archaeon's been a little bit bored in the Darklands because after Imric there wasn't uh, too much in the way of uh, fun enemy battles to fight. And even Imric's was relatively easy, but anyway. Anyway, uh, before we get started, the engagement goal was once again reached by the looks of it so this will be an hour long episode and the offer does continue to stand 300 likes and 50 comments and the next episode will be an hour long as well uh, let's get this started i am very excited for this All right, here we go once again, Archeon being a man of very few words, but so be it indeed. Here we go, Tretch has brought himself two full stacks and pretty darn decent ones uh, to that, so I'm hoping oh, we can get a very nice battle out of all this. It looks like he's deployed close to where his reinforcements are getting on the field, and oh, there's two more heroes out of fun of the little extra reinforcing armies. Well, uh, good, for, uh, good for Tretch. Will it be enough. However, uh, that remains to be seen. Uh, Valiant defeat according to the outer resolve, though once again I sincerely doubt that. We are going to start the battle off by annoying the enemy on the flanks here with- oh wow, that one poor storm vermin got absolutely crashed. <laughs> oh wow, okay. And while well, this one didn't have a particularly good day either, and hey, I got two at the same time, that's unusual. Uh, usually they don't uh, hit them all that much. Anyway, Archeon is starting off the battle himself by moving through the enemy blob. We're trying to clear his path with a pink fire just to knock the enemy units out so he can go directly for Tretch here. And Tretch does not in any way want to fight Archie and has already lost about a quarter of his HP. Um, but no matter what reinforcements he calls, he's not going to be able to do anything and to Archaeon. All right, so that will begin over here. We have two storm vermin with halberds chasing around a couple of our marauder horses, but they're not afraid of getting caught, so they're just riding around, uh, being as annoying to the enemy as possible, sniping away a few of those storm vermin on occasion. We got shots coming in from our hell cannon as well, and our giants, uh, or our giant, one of them, has made an to the fray, Hugin of Kate in particular, Hugin rather. And Prince Ograx is uh, leading the fray as well, but we do have to be a little bit careful with him. Still on the fence as to whether we keep Juggernaut or go for the... Uh, or just keep the uh, Chaos Steed for him, uh, but we'll see. 
if he leads regular knights rather than skull crushers, then there's a decent likelihood that he will. And I'll probably just put him back on the steed, but once again. Anyway, speaking of steeds, and oh, Tretch already got run down. Well, to be fair, it wasn't going to be an interesting fight. He basically didn't get a single hit off on Archeon. Maybe one hit, uh, but otherwise was just getting knocked around by Archeon. Getting, uh, getting hit to the ground due to his lack of mass. Anyway, as I said, speaking of steeds, the Chaos Knights of Zinch and the Swords of Chaos and a few units of our uh, uh, Marauder Horse Masters and charge in to stop these darn units of Plague Claw Catapults from firing. And we also have our Exalted Hero of Nurgle still with these, or not still, but uh, with these guys, while the rest of the enemy army moves in and starts fighting our infantry. Oh, I love seeing the giants and just tower over everything. Some enemy units flying. We have the aspiring champions at the head of the pack here, as well they should be. And somewhere here, Harry Hammerstorm is doing his thing. It's always difficult to spot. There he is. There he is. Maybe they should give him just a little bit more splash damage. Let's see. Hey, it doesn't feel like he knocks out nearly as many units as you would expect, and damn, it's a bloody battle on the front lines with all of these effects happening. We got the, uh, oh, giants look pretty good in the uh, warp quake coming down through all the uh, uh, dirt and dust that it kicks up. And they do have the Warp Quake, but they didn't use Seismic Snare, so we're not actually stuck. I wonder why and they didn't pop the Snare. Maybe they popped it to try to stop Archeon from chasing down Tretch, but clearly you know, that didn't work out. Anyway, the battle is more or less just begun. Reinforcements are still making their way onto the field, and the, uh, and the balance power is still in the enemy's favor. Archeon is chasing down single entities. I believe he's knocked a Doom Wheel out and is now going after Assassins. Pack masters and any other types of heroes. Uh, the rest of the enemy army that has tried to attack our, the main portion of our stack here has by and large failed, and our Chaos Warriors will continue to peel away. But there are plenty of artillery and plenty more enemy infantry headed our way, including a help at Abomination, and by the looks of it, uh, that's something for Archaon to actually deal with. Over in the background, we also have our Horse Masters working overtime, chasing enemies down. Ograx and Archaon are going to plow right on through those Plague Monks and head towards that Abomination, mostly because I don't particularly want the Abomination in our main battle line. I'm sure the Giants would have been able to knock it down without too many problems over time. But at the same time, it would have killed off a few infantry. And there we go, it's down to half HP already. Archaon is pretty scary after all. No, I'd like to see him hit a little bit harder as we, um, as the battle goes on, or not as the battle, as the campaign and goes on. The enemy army has also split up itself, deciding to send a very decent portion, uh, a couple of units of spears and storm vermin, as well as a doom wheel, out to follow the knights and horse masters, led by our new exalted hero of Nurgle here. Which, more power to them, I suppose, but I don't see them destroying the knights, and I do see the knights destroying and this particular Doom Wheel, which is trapped and trying to escape. Alright, Swords of Chaos facing off against some Plague Monk Sensor Bearers and Storm Vermin with Halberds. Actually a pretty decent, uh, uh, pretty decent set of units, and Warp Lightning dropping down upon them. And we should get out of that uh, treed area, however, just so that the enemy isn't able to take advantage of it. Looks like one of our Chaos Warriors got sufficiently hurt to allow us to summon a unit of Forsaken on the field using our Bound Army ability, which just means more bodies to throw at the enemy. And our bodies are going to be far, far more effective than theirs. We also have the high ground right now, and even though the enemy continues to fire at us with some Plague Claws and some of those uh, Warp Lightnings, it ain't really going their way. Back here, Archeon's periodically dropping Searing Dooms on the pile of catapults. We've managed to take a few out, and the Piercing Bolts of Burning also helped in that matter. Balance of Power has finally shifted to about 65, maybe closing in on 70 
percent in our favor though as we can see our main line has taken a little bit of damage although more so to hp and then actual model losses i do believe the doom wheel here has fallen and the enemy warlord which had led uh, the charge of these units against our knights as or is attempting to escape whether terrified or ratting doesn't really matter Ooh, i think they just brought one of the swords of chaos down that's an achievement in and of itself well done to them, but uh, it's not going to be enough. All right, back off a little bit. And now the Warlord was terrified, but looks like he's back. But the rest of Treacher's army is much more terrified. Plague Monks will, of course, still fight. Um, but like I keep saying, it just doesn't seem to be enough. Now, our Chaos Sorcerer, the Chronicler, was hovering over the battlefield for most of the battle, annoying the enemy with repeated uses of pink fire and the occasional blue fire to keep the uh, passive up. Um, but now has decided that it's time to land and help Ograx deal with a few enemies. Why don't you look at that? Corn and Zinch are working together pure true harmony anyway with that it looks like the enemy army will in fact shatter a pretty long battle and about six ish minutes of straight fighting always good to see it does look like there's a unit of plague monks and that still remains and we will have to deal with so deal with them we shall Alright, there is a little bit of chasing to do, however, and I'm just going to speed this up while we deal with the chasing and then return to the Plague Monks. There we go. And a few of those Force Masters are going to charge in, and fortunately, Sensor Bearers or not, they still have no armor, so even a, a weaker unit of Force Masters will be able to dish out damage to them on the charge, just can't stay locked down in melee, or the Sensor Bearers will rip them apart. Chaos, mm, not... Mm, uh, the Chaos Knights, that's the word, uh, would be able to deal with them fairly easily, and but they're a little bit busy chasing things down, or trying to go after that warlord. Oh wow, that seemed like a lot of hits from those sensor bearers. You're, yeah, that, that took a while to bring a single horse master down. Alright, and ooh, I like seeing the uh, Swords of Chaos sort of in shadow there, but also not in shadow. It's good either way. And ooh, I also think our Horse Masters are just nearly there in terms of leveling up. We'll soon be able to make them into regular Chaos Knights, and then some of them will get marks of various types of... Uh Oh, various types of gods. Anyway, finally, we have turned towards the Plague Monks, and now it's just a matter of knocking the rest of them out, but frankly, it's probably going to be impossible to spot those that remain in that blob of units. And we did get the chance to chase down a fair few of the enemy. Let's see how many remain, let's see how much damage we took, and let's see how we're going to go about the rest of this uh, subjugation. All right, very nice, very nice. It doesn't look like a close victory to me, but hey, what do I know? Uh, we managed to destroy a decent portion of the enemy army, of course, being Skaven. A lot of them did manage to scurry away as they do, but it'll be a simple matter, hopefully, to chase them down. Uh, Prince Ograx took a little bit of damage there, certainly making me think that maybe we replaced the Helm of Discord with something a little bit more defensive for him personally, as he is always in the thick of things, and I do have a tendency to send him together with Archaon so that they can fight back to back and yeah maybe we'll put the helm of discord in the exalted here of nurgle which are a little bit tank here so it might make more sense or on the chaos sorcerer because it'll be easier to reposition him on his disc and if he's on a war shrine then he'll be pretty much always with the main blob of troops anyway anyway otherwise we are reasonably in good health we did take a little bit of damage on the swords of chaos but they should recover we also got about 10k gold for our trouble and which is damn well worth it and and yes, yeah, I was right. This was a tier 5 settlement. And you know what? A tier 5, it makes me think it's probably worth keeping this guy as a vassal. And, oh, okay, so he also gives us leadership for subterranean battles. Okay, no wonder I didn't remember what the heck that was, because that's irrelevant. Speed plus 10%. Oh, we will certainly take that. And while our knights are now at 112 and 105 speed. Very, very quick. Chaos Chariot for Venrous Soul Shredder. 
I don't remember who you are, but you shouldn't be on a Chaos Chariot. Oh, you're the exalted uh, hero of Undivided, currently with Azazel. And though as to whether you stay with Azazel remains to be seen. For now, though, we're okay. Also, Azazel, while I have you... Hmm... You have one space here, okay, well, we'll just leave you as you are for now, it's fine. It's fine. Now, this is what we're more concerned with. Oh, uh, I'll be so upset if he gets deleted. Also, because I really don't like the uh, Recruit Defeated Legendary Lords mod, but anyway. Uh, Re Clush, we need to chase you down, sir. Uh, we will break the siege for now of Crookback Mountain, even though we could easily take it. And because I'd rather leave it to them. And yes, it has iron, but you know what? It's not a big deal. Thing is, our Chaos Warriors at rank 7 have 162 armor. It's already ludicrously high, and we're very much into the diminishing returns, so it's not a big deal that we get at this particular arm, uh, iron piece. And a faction of the Tier 5 settlement and all the Skaven goodies, as well as fairly decently on the front lines against the uh, against the orcs, will probably come in much more handy and than a single little minor settlement. Plus the bonuses we get from uh, having these guys as vassals. Astragruel Iron Pick. I would like you to move right here. You're going to take down Greyhag hopefully while Archaon takes Silver Spear and Clush out. And, wait. Eh, he can raid. 1362? Not bad actually. Not bad at all. Alrighty, let's keep moving in the meantime. Gulator, you're heading to the Volcano's Heart. And... Do we need to fight it is the question. What do we have here? It's something of a stack, but on the other hand, we essentially fought this same stack plus another stack with Gulator last time, and had no problem at all. And in fact, last time they had Exalted Blood Litters. Oh, they have at least one unit here as well. Eh, I think it's probably not worth our time. Oh, look, they have another Sibylline Slaughter Kate and a Demon Spew. It would be Demon Spew versus Demon Spew. I used to say the few, the spew, but now not so few. Still spew, though. Anyway, I think we'll all resolve this. No problem. And, ooh, decent amount of cash for our trouble. We'll also sack, not raise. And then we'll occupy. Barbarian for Valmir. Valmir? Who the heck is Valmir? Okay. <laughs> Too many names. And, ooh, wait. Did we just get a Warrior Bane? Warrior's Bane? Okay, wait, 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 wait. Yes, we did. Minus 15% weapon, base weapon damage. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, wait, 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 wait. This is part of the plan. I have a plan. <laughs> We're gonna put the Warrior Bane on you, Kudakai, Chaos Sorcerer of Slanesh, and you'll be on your War Shrine supporting the troops. So, Warrior Bane will be minus 15 base weapon damage, plus the 40% that we get of base and armor piercing on Overwhelm, plus the 20% out of uh, Poison, plus soul grinders give another 10% uh, via enfeeble attack and I think there's gonna be at least one other but we'll take a look and then we'll get soporific musk via fiends of slanish and maybe stack a few other things I want to see how many contact effects we can stack with this army to uh, play around the overwhelm thing I I, I will make it work I'm gonna I'm determined to make it work anyway no units are useless. Uh, Galator, you will retake this, or take it, because I got distracted. Occupied by that uh, sword. Legion of Chaos, alas, destroyed, but hey, he didn't want to be our vassal, and thus he had to burn. Kolek, hey, you, sir. We're going to Kunlun, but we're actually going to declare war on village. Here's the thing. Uh, can you go into... Yeah, you can. Uh, with Sabitha or Sabitha Gatesmiter moving in, I don't want her sacking Wei Jin, and I don't want her occupying it, because we want it for ourselves. Meaning, this is the time to declare war on them. Meaning, Kuhar will have to go to Kunlun instead. Which ain't the worst thing in the world. Uh, so you're gonna go right here on the road. We'll have your raid while Kolek takes Wei Jin. Declare war and... You sack refused to declare... Okay, fine. It seems like everybody we declare war against... Ooh, there's a little stack here. Might be worth fighting... Oh, are you kidding me? It's just out of range? Ah, it's just out of range. Okay, it's not worth fighting then. Alright, we'll just duck, but... Don't sack it. It is a dark fortress with a landmark. And I am still shocked about the fact that there is a landmark, but pleasantly so. Alrighty, Kuhar. They're gonna go into raiding here. 
and go to Kenlin next turn. We should also re-up our Tex Demonic Pact for you. Unfortunately, we didn't get any students, though I would like to check if we have any spare students. Yes, we do. You can have one. I feel like maybe student isn't the best... Following a Coronite unit, probably not the best place to be, but... <laughs> Well, whatever. Uh, whatever. Kagan, you, sir, are going to help out with Village. You're going to move to Terracotta Graveyard and up to Drag... Well, probably up to Pome, and then we'll have uh, one of the actual armies take Dragon's Gate. I also noticed that the Yusak are not at war with us. And... Uh, huh. Wait. So they, they keep the vassalage, but they refuse to fight. That's really interesting. Why does it do that? Shouldn't that... Unvassalize them? Huh. Oh, whatever. Maybe they're just too afraid of fighting Arcan. Uh, Karan the Black. Yes, you are the new Slaneshi guy, or soon to be the new Slaneshi guy, to join Arcan's forces. And speaking of new Slaneshi guys, and we do want another Chaos Sorcerer of Slanish in Azazel's army. Hudakai is a Chaos Sorcerer of Slanish coming from. Shayish, meaning we want another. Oh. It might be faster to generate one here in two turns than all the way back here. Want to, yeah, it'll be a little bit faster. All right, we can wait on that. Uh, does anybody else need a sorcerer, though? I know Kolek. Wait, did I ever get Kolek a sorcerer? I didn't get Kolek a sorcerer. Oh, my. Whoops, Kolek. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, big guy. Please don't hurt me. Uh, we will upgrade the loot heap at Nangao, and we could also build the Sorcerer Shrine here. Eh, start on the Sorcerer Shrine. Although this one isn't all that far away. Neither is this one. Hmm. What do we have in terms of sorcerers available? Uh, it'll be probably an undivided sorcerer for Kolek. And I'm thinking metal, so unearthly reflexes again. Yeah, hideous visages are pretty useless. All right, we'll do you. You, sir. On the field, costing us money, but, uh, well, we need a sorcerer for Kolek. We'll also keep the exalted hero for Kolek as well, and we'll try to get Kolek a war shrine of Nurgle for the aura regeneration it provides. All those big units are going to need the regen. We'll have four-ish Shagoths in here. Four to six, depending. And then heroes. And that'll be the army. Maybe five sh I don't know. So, so, some number of Shagots. It's uh, it's not a big deal uh, right now. Now, diplomacy real quick. Let's see what we got here. Peace with the Decadent Coast, Village, Clan Rictus, and Clan Ashen. Still don't want to vassalize, eh? Yeah, all right. Well, fine. I still think that's a way to earn Archaon's respect to some degree. Uh, Wintertooth. Alright, we still have that military access. Is it really going to tank our reliability if we declare war on them? Uh, Throg, you better not screw us over, man. I don't appreciate that. Uh, Harbinger of Disaster, nowhere near to Vassalage by the looks of it. Getting closer with Fecundites, but that is irrelevant to us. War Host of Jar, Legion of the Gore Queen. Zatan, Zatan. Relax. Uh, everything else, I think, is fine as it is. Damn. He's willing to give us a lot of money to re-up that trade agreement. We're not gonna. And so is Mulder. Huh. Everybody wants to trade with us. But, oh, these are all factions that we want to either vassalize or confederate, so we can't do so. All right, let's do a little bit of building, building, just in case. Uh, let's see. Favor buildings, not the tier 4 favor buildings, but a yes to the tier 4... Uh, Worshippers building. Most definitely. And we want the additional uh, income from all that. Crystal Towers looks good to me. Looks good to me. Looks good. I swear there was one... Oh, or was it the Challenge Stone? Oh, wait, we just did none. Yeah, that was probably the one I was thinking of. Oh, no, there's the Tower Gorgoth as well. Nice. All right, and the Black Fortress. Good. And you can have, for now, a, a Chaos Shrine. More sorcerers can't go wrong. I also believe I wanted to trade to Kugath Amblepeak, in which I guess we can do so right now. I also want to check the uh, public order in a few places. Amblepeak to Kugath. Still can't quite afford it, but you know what? Good enough. It's 5k. It's 5k, and we've been taking all of his money for a while to the point that he hasn't really been able to upgrade anything, so... 
Uh, I feel slightly bad. But hey, look at all the territory we gave him. He can't complain. Don't complain, Kugeth. Uh, Vela Titans and Blood Peak. Do we give those to Kugeth as well? He's still going to generate more money than Norskins will in the mountains either way, I think. Titan's Notch at tier 3 currently only generates 248. Whereas... These are all tier 1s. Do we have any tier 3s that aren't a port? And so this is a tier 3 by itself generates 300... 75 without any of the other buildings being considered whereas this max is out at 75 yeah no it's better to give that to another faction and norskins are relatively useless outside of ports and frankly they don't even generate too much money up there anyway even with ports i believe that's good so we're gonna skip 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 and path to glory who Oh, Galator, the Ascension. Uh, more likely than not, I'm going to keep him mortal, because we're going to get another Demon Prince of Nurgle commanding somewhere else anyway. Hmm, a moment. Win a battle, win a battle, win a battle. Okay, fine. Win a battle with two Chaos Knights, eh? Uh, that's not going to happen in this army, but he's not going to need to buff Chaos Knights in this army anyway, so it's all fine. At the Glory Commandment. There we go, something that is not... Ignorable, and then one last thing, or two last things. First of all, public order. Plans of stone steel. You don't like what's going on. And you are looking likely to rebel. But there's nothing we can do about that. The Skaven corruption is, uh, uh, is screwing us over here. Uh, next up is Warpstone Desert, which is also not super happy. We have no Vassal Emissary here. Um, uh, maybe we delete the bone pit then? I know it's a growth, but... I guess we could undo exploit vassals for a little while. It's too bad that none, nothing here gives us public order. Only deletes public order. Alright, let's do that. But we'll probably want to build a, a chaos shrine or a chaos temple or whatever that building is called. Here for the public order and for the buffs. And I believe that's good. All right, wait, wait, wait. One other thing. Pig barter. 4,000. We want that district at tier 4 because we want those ironworks working for us. I also, I really want to get the uh, fire glaives because I just love listening to their pew, pew, pew noises as they fire. Treachy, do you want a piece immediately? Yeah, he wants peace immediately, but no. We will subjugate you. And... Alright, where's the Decadent Coast? Hopefully not dead. That's where the Decadent Coast hopefully is. Alright, let's see what we're looking at. Uh, up here. Okay, so... Oh, you gotta be kidding me. They're dead. They're dead. Really? Huh. So, Wolfric took Negrar. Creator, Path to Glory for Hudakai. Well, that didn't work out. War declared between Legion, the Gore Queen, and the Decadent Host. Somebody got muddled as well, but oh well. Well, that's a crying shame. Hmm. Well, Sigvald. Ill fated, aren't you? Uh, where do you have. He still has an army somewhere, doesn't he? He had one out here, like a half stack. Maybe he could take one of these places. Ah. Uh. I wonder. I wonder where he went. Man, that really didn't work out. Hmm. How do we do this then? We could have. We could kill Valkia for daring to take one of Azazel's prize or start on killing Valkia. It's going to take a while. I still don't know where that other army is. Though, if we leave the Frozen City. And they besiege. Well, it really depends on how many troops they have here. I'm almost tempted to undo these because what if they're going around this way? They probably can't take the Fortress of the Dam, though actually, Garrison here is pretty weak as well. I'd love for them to revive so that we can instantly attack them. They clearly are on the field somewhere. Hmm. And I once again don't want to use that mod. Might just go after Valkia here. Got to start on her faction anyway. And how many territories does she have currently? Nine. Oh, Valkia. Why would you do this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
nine, right? All right, so they're all within sight and should be reasonably takeable. All right, we'll probably do that then. Uh, but in the meantime, let's move everybody else around and see what we got going for us. You, Archie. You need to kill off her quick slice blade. He's, oh, he's going to run around the mountain. I don't like that. Hmm. We need him to not do that. Go here. Try to push him up this way towards the road rather than towards the mountain. Don't go around. Don't go around. Ah, you little... You little... Damn. I want him here. If we go here, most likely we won't be able to reach Mount Silver Spear in a single turn. On resolve. And, well, it's a decent amount of money. Though there are giants that get hurt for their trouble. And, ah, we can just reach it. Ooh, well done. Well done. And another fear of Aramar. You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> we have, like, I don't know, like eight of those now. It's ridiculous. All right. Demand Silver Spear. Ye shall go. And the giants, the giants can't survive this. Hmm. All right. I might fight this between the episodes just because it's a waste of time. I'll see. For now, Astrogruel, I would like you to not go into any stance because you can't. Also, what kind of spells do you have? You're just Searing Doom, eh? And you just have piles of gobbles. What do we have in terms of defenses at Mount Greyhag? And we have a Pyrrhic Victory. I mean, frankly, I don't really care what happens to this army. Is this a field battle? It is a field battle. Hmm... I might fight this because it's just for fun and it'll be kind of different in the form of using uh, uh, Chaos Dwarf, well actually not really using Chaos Dwarf units so much as using Gabo units, but nonetheless, could be fun. The leadership is going to be horrendous though, but I guess we're fighting the Skaven, but it is fighting Skaven with the, uh, with the AI's leadership cheats, so not quite the same. Anyway, for now we have you, Gulator, needing to move out. I guess we're going to go to sea, grab that shipwreck, and then head on southward towards both Throggy and towards Throt. Oh, it looks like Throt has started to lose ground as well, so. Yeah, are you still healing out here? No. Maybe I should have stayed on land, but oh well. Uh, we want to immediately get rid of the Tower of Decay and trade it to Malice, so he can start building it up. Now, not the Forest of Decay, the Tower of Decay. What? Oh, it is the Forest of Decay. I lied. Forest of Decay, there we go. Wow, it's worth barely anything to you. Hmm, nonetheless. At least you can have a full stack this way, or a full uh, territory this way. The problem is he's probably going to lose the Blighted Grove by virtue of the fact that the Chaos Corruption will screw him over. It'll just be infinite rebellions, and frankly, Chaos Rebellions are pretty decent. So yeah, uh, you can have the Tower of Flies as well. And that one's worth a little bit more to you, and why don't you fund whatever it is we're doing. And we can trade Volcano's Heart instead to you, which will give you a full province. Nice. And give us some cash while we're at it. Plus, uh, we are building a Zinchin army, so we will hopefully get some use out of the Zinchin units. And, in fact, if we're going to do so, we'll want to immediately... Ooh, you have Exalted Flamers available. Already, you have Tsangors, regular Flamers. We don't care about the Chaos Warriors, but, uh, yeah, the Exalted Flamers. Uh, very nice. Uh, that'll work nicely with the Flamers we already have. Crystal Spires, please. All right. I knew I kept you for a reason. Hopefully you serve your purposes. Azel, you're going to fight Valkia most likely. Kill like you're good. Okay, I need you to go away. <laughs> are you at war with the village right now? No, you are allied with Eshin, but there isn't much left of Eshin. Actually, speaking of Eshin, Suhar, I would like you to head to Kanlan. And I would like Kagan to head to Mingju, I guess. Wait. Oh, Valiant Defeat. Oh, Valiant Defeat means these guys will sally out, which means we'll do this next turn. Uh, let's get the Ranger's Standard on you, sir, for now. Alright, that looks good. Man, now we have several potential fights. I would let... Oh, you're sieging Kolek, preventing him from healing. Nice move. I should have I should have set Kolek outside of Weijin before doing that. 
Annoying, but smart AI, smart. Are you close enough to village to draw him out? No, which means we get to auto-resolve your little army. And then fight village's actual stack. That's probably gonna hurt us too. 64, not bad, and a free banner of eternal flame, I'll certainly take it. The heals are not worth it because they'll only heal our infantry, we'll take the money instead. Now... Do you even need the banner of eternal flame? I could use it. And now we'll fight Village, who will also run, maybe? Let's see. I'll level up and then fight. And, ooh, you got plenty of levels. Well, let's get to you. Monstrous Strength. I should have probably done that before auto-resolving. For all those, well, monsters. And let's buff up to Toughen Skin, so that you have all that extra spell resistance against the Village in particular. As he does have a tendency to spam blue fires. Go. Ah, there we go, a Pyrrhic victory. Kolek, you're gonna hit even harder with that banner of Etern Infernal fl Eternal Flame. I think the Chaos version should be Infernal Flame, though, Milch has 35% fire resistance, and this forces Kolek to use flaming attacks. Essentially giving Village another 35% resistance. You know what? Don't use the banner, then. At least not for this turn. Hmm... We'll put the banner on one of the doggos, because they're going to be moving around in the background, annoying the uh, pink uh, horrors and such. But let's make sure that kill, like, hits hard. Away we go. As Alrighty, here we go. Kolek versus Village should be a pretty interesting contest, though Village is so incredibly tanky, we're more likely than not going to ignore him himself until close to the end of the uh, the battle and target other things. There is a Chaos Sorcerer of Zinch on a War Shrine right there, and I think that will be a pretty good target for Kolek. He's going to try to dodge a few of those pink fires of various types, whether it be from the Exalted Pink Horde or the regular while heading directly towards that war shrine. Uh, just out of curiosity, once again, how much missile resistance? He's got 40% missile resistance and 36 ward safe, so all of that shouldn't be that threatening. And there we go. Man, imagine being on top of the uh, war shrine, being very used to towering over the battlefield, and then, yeah, just over your ramparts, Kolek shows up. Or over the... I don't know, I wouldn't call this thing a howda because it's being carried like this, but, uh, I don't know, it's kind of, kind of like a ship more than anything. Anyway, go like towering over you, scary, is what I'm getting at, and fairly effective, I would imagine. The enemy Chaos Sorcerer has lost about 20%, maybe 15% of his HP. He does have a fair amount of HP on that War Shrine, but... Kolek will rip it apart, and he's also serving another purpose while doing this. He has regeneration and a lot of resistances, so the enemy is wasting both spells and plenty of shots from their missile infantry at him while the rest of our army approaches. Now, the way that our army is approaching is we have the Marauders of Nurgle together, or the Marauders in general, together with the various Chaos Trolls, which are going to charge the enemy and distract them in the center, while the entire left flank is where all of our various dragons dragon ogres are. They're hoping to crush this entire flank, leaving this flank more or less untouched and distracted by Kolek and the main line, and then a loop around to help destroy them. We do have to be careful of the uh, Chosen of Zinch with, uh, with those halberds. These are Chosen, after all. We're a lot more used to fighting marauders and, on occasion, chaos warriors. And the Chosen should be able to deal with any... Uh, well, any trolls just fine, and probably dragon ogres just fine as well. A very dangerous unit for this particular army. Hopefully the poison and the, com the combination of various things will help us out. Kolek has nearly defeated the Chaos Sorcerer, I think. Well, he's still got about 70% uh, of his HP, but uh, nobody else is really hurting Kolek right now, so I think uh, that's just fine. Over on this side, we have the Dragon Ogres facing up against a pile of spawn of Zinch, and it looks like they have help. 
from the uh, Doom Knight. The Doom Knight's charging into the Dragon Ogres, probably not the best idea in terms of matchup. They were probably much better off trying to destroy uh, the trolls uh, with their poor leadership. Uh, the additional leadership shock would have probably helped quite a bit here. Um, but alas for them, uh, they're facing off against the anti-large and Dragon Ogres, so every time they do this, they will probably lose the units. Speaking of losing units, most of the Chaos Spawn have been defeated. The Chaos War Shrine is pretty much done for as well, though Kolek has dropped to about 60% HP. We do still have to remember that he does have regeneration. And... Okay, it's gonna take a couple more hits, most likely. So, Kolek, enjoy the chase. How are we doing otherwise, though? The balance of power, only about 60% in our favor. One of the units of Dragon Ogres, uh, Chaos Trolls, and Marauders have routed in this direction. And one, two units of Marauders have routed in this direction. And though the Prime Primordials are just chasing some enemy Chaos Trolls to make sure that they don't escape. It looks like an enemy Exalted Hero wants to face off against Kolek. He's a lot faster than Village. The village is extremely tanky and extremely powerful as a caster and lord, but his one issue is that he is extremely slow, can't really reposition himself, and thus we can continue to more or less ignore him. While Kolek deals with the exalted hero in the same manner that he dealt and with that war shrine. And deal with him, he shall, as the exalted hero will drop and Kolek will return to the fray. We pop a uh, we pop a chain lightning from the summoners of rage and now need to start taking care of those chosen of Zinch, who are going to get back up from the Doom Knights uh, that are hovering overhead. Are you sure you want to drop down into this blob of dragon ogres there, Doom Knights? Because I'm not so sure you should. All right, and we activate the uh, the buffet skin to give them melee attack and melee damage or weapon strength as well. The Doom Knights are pretty much done, and it looks like the Chosen are running as well. Kolek has returned to the Flore against Village and his second Exalted Hero, as well as this other pile of Chosen of Zinch who are still holding in a nice uh, line together with those spawn. Very nice. All right, the village certainly gave us a fight here. Probably a better fight or a more difficult fight, at least, in terms of getting the win than Archeon versus Tretch there, or Tretch's army. Tretch himself was never going to be a threat. He's no Queek, after all. Alrighty, and Village is still fighting, and he's steady, but the rest of his army don't look so steady by comparison. I also noticed that the Exalted Hero is on a Chariot, which is not useful in this particular stack whatsoever. Alright, away go the Exalted Hero, and ooh, Kolek sends Village flying. Considering the prideful nature of the of the twisted twin, the uh, well, that's got a rankle, <laughs> and just keep knocking them down. All right, but it won't matter as Village will actually shatter, and the rest of his army will begin to dissipate. We're gonna do our best to chase those chosen down once again. Sad that we can't uh, force them to join our side, but we do have four units of doggos in this army who are adept at chasing. Well, to be fair, the Dragon Ogres are okay as well, because they have quite a bit of speed, it's just that they have problems with their uh, units and getting in each other's way. Anyway, Kolik's gonna chase down Village, we're going to chase down the rest, but we can do that off-screen. Alrighty, very good and very nice indeed. Village and most of his army destroyed those though though those chosen with halberds. They certainly proved to be quite the issue, uh, sending several of our units of uh, dragon ogres back. Though at the end of the day, uh, we did manage to run them down. Another nine, nearly ten k money for our trouble. And it looks like in terms of the dragon ogres, the prime primordials took the win in terms of. 
skills, though. The Scaled Scourge at 10.5k just barely outdid them in terms of damage. And well done to the both of you. And take the money, run the rest of Village's army down, and then proceed. With... You really got it? You really got to do that? <laughs> What are you doing? Alright, I'll resolve this real quick, and that's a lot of movement wasted to do this. Alright, I'll resolve that. And a little bit more money, and you know what? Do we take the- nah, just take the money again. I was about to say, do we take the healing, but no. And hey, more melee resist- or melee defense and wins of magic power reserve capacity for the army. It's actually very solid. And defeat trade in way. Another warrior bane. Well, I can't say that's not a great pickup either. Uh, March stands for you. Actually, wait. Uh, I was hoping to go into raiding, but that's not going to work. All right, just go into channeling then and go right here. We'll move through to Dragon Gate or Pome, and depending. Kukar, you're going to stay here and attack Kunlun next. Kagan, your mind has been muddled less, so your movement isn't quite where we want it to be. So you're going to have to raid somewhere around here. And take probably Pome. We'll leave Mingju for uh, uh, for Kukar to do. And then the Dragon Ogres will make their way through the Dragon Gate. Just gotta make sure that Zatan doesn't pull a Valkia and take out the uh, last fortress and belonging to these guys. Uh, I think in retrospect what I probably should have done is preemptively declared war on Valkia so that she didn't attack... Uh, uh, she didn't attack Sigvald. And you know what? Just in case, we're going to cancel these two buildings. I know it'll cost us the uh, uh, the sorcerer, the next sorcerer for Zazel. But if there is another army nearby, and I'm pretty sure there is, and we can allow them to retake a settlement and purposely lose, and then still get them. So cancel this construction. Cancel this construction as well. And we'll hit Valkia, though I'm not sure that we'll have time this time around, but we'll see. Uh, let's see what else we have to do this turn first. Astragruel. Oh, right, this little fight. I do think this little fight could be quite interesting, especially because of the horrific leadership that we'll have to contend with, and the fact that the enemy has an artillery piece, and we do not. Though, on the other hand, we do have stock on our hobgoblin. Sneaky gets. Hmm... You know what, I think this might be a, a fun fight to fight. So I think this is the fight that we will fight. Go. Alrighty, here we go. The Zatan campaign flashbacks are real as we'll be using some chaos, well, one chaos dwarf and a giant pile of hobgobs in this particular battle. Bounce of power is very much in the enemy's favor at this rate, and the enemy does have all of those, um, well, uh, we have all of these goblin laborers acting as our melee line with their absolutely atrocious leadership. On the bright side, however, our lord is very heavily armored at 145, and because of his item, he is unbreakable, which means... Is it because of his item that he's unbreakable? I think so. Uh, he's unbreakable, which means that the enemy is going to have a very tough time in dealing with him. Because he will, if he gets surrounded, he has Searing Doom, and the enemy just doesn't have the amount of armor piercing, other than perhaps from the uh, Death Globes, to easily deal with him. What the enemy does have, however, is repeated uses of the Menace Below, and they're going to summon their first use and down on our Goblin and laborers here and we will destroy the first of the pack of rats that would nearly forced one of our goblin laborers to rat which isn't a good sign considering those are basic unbuffed summons and we have an actual full stack to deal with uh, we're going to go about this as this we have our two units of goblin sneaky gets deployed or four units two on each side and our units of cavalry deployed on both sides as well the main thing we need to do is run down that plague claw catapult and run down both of the death globes and poison winds to prevent them from applying all their damage. The rest of our goblin laborer army will approach, and I guess the uh, hobgoblin archers as well. 
Though they will be harassed on the approach for pretty much the entire time by enemy clan rat summons. And we do have to be careful as a summon of clan rats on top of a unit of... Uh, well, basically any of the units, if isolated, will win by the looks of it, as the hobgoblin laborers are in fact weaker than they are. Which is at least somewhat concerning. Alright, over on this side though, our hobgoblins have made it into the foray and are going after that plague claw catapult, both the cavalry and the sneaky gits. Uh, like and over on the other side, the same sort of thing is happening. Hobgoblins are, are rushing the enemy, one of them will begin dueling a clan rat spear unit, although I hesitate to say which one will actually win at this particular contest, but the purpose of this will be to allow the rest of our cav to move along past the enemies and into those poison winds and those uh, death globes. And there we go. And as for Gruul, despite the uh, rather silly name, dropping some searing dooms on the enemy, he does have the help of one of the units of, uh, of goblin laborers, though we can't expect them to stay in combat. But we can expect him to do decent amounts of damage between his armor, his splash damage, and his spell work. And frankly, it does seem reasonably appropriate to have one uh, one Chaos Dwarf Lord and just piles and piles of Hobgoblins in terms of the ratio of units. Maybe one unit of Chaos Dwarfs. Keep it nice and loreful. Anyway, over on this side, it actually looks like the Clan Rats are winning against the uh, well, at least one of our units of Hobgoblin Sneaky Gits who will rout. Over on this side, the duel is still happening and it looks like it's about even. Clan Rat Spears with Shields versus Hobgoblin Sneaky Gits. Hmm. Seem to be fighting on par with each other. Obviously, the AI does have leadership cheats, so in theory, without those leadership cheats, the uh, Hobgoblin Sneaky Gits would win, and they would probably win quite a bit harder if they uh, had had the opportunity to make use of their bleed-causing uh, precursor weapons. Uh, but that's all right. They are serving their purpose, which is this. The Poison Wind Globadiers are out, the Plague Claw Catapult is out, and the other Poison or Death Globes are engaged with some more Hobgoblin, or not Goblins, uh, laborers. Specifically, we sent the orc laborers, our stronger unit of laborers, to go after them because they're easy access to armor piercing and will do a little bit more damage than the gobos. Alright, bring down those death globes, make sure we don't have to deal with them. And uh, there we go, finally one of our units are each half HP, well, in fact lots of our units are at half HP, but one of them in the middle of the enemy formation will allow us to summon a unit of Forsaken to help out. This may be a borrowed army, but it still does have our faction-wide uh, army abilities. I like that summoning. Which is really quite nice. Looks like the Gobbo laborers are routing, but at the same time the clan rats that were here and repeatedly got hit by the Searing Dooms are out as well, but that's not the last Searing Doom of the battle. And gotta keep those dropping to make sure we destroy those ratties. Alright, Forsaken will hopefully keep them trapped here or engaged here. They are taking damage already, down to about 70% HP and surrounded, but the rest of the battle has begun to go our way, though the damn menaces below have still not stopped a new one, and drops onto the field right behind one of our units of Sneaky Gits, and I imagine uh, this one will in fact a break as well. I also notice that the uh, less effect mod I'm using doesn't make this effect go away, the uh, little warp stone nets around, call those. I've never been a big fan of the effect, because I think it looks kind of silly, but oh well. Not a big deal. Alright, how's that balance of power looking? We are winning, still in our favor, just need to make sure that those units that route and don't come back. We have taken quite a bit of damage, another Searing Doom will come down and our Lord is down to about 60% uh, of his HP, and the enemy Lord, I believe, is now whacking away at him. That's where the armor piercing is coming from, and probably most of the damage on Astrogruel, uh, but with the help of these Forsaken, and all, the, and all the other units running around in the background, we should be able to carry the day. Ooh, nice hit to the back. 
Gaben are probably fairly used to getting wounds to the back, I would imagine. Another Searing Doom comes down and the enemy will all, by the looks of it, shatter and book it on out of there. Very, very close battle. Look at all the damage on all of our units. They're all down to like 25% HP-ish, with the exception of a couple of the uh, Hobgobbo Sneaky Gits, which are down to about 30%, and the exception of our Archers, which didn't engage in uh, melee combat. Yeah, very nice. I'm very happy with that battle. I'm very happy indeed, and the fact that now Archeon doesn't have to waste his time in dealing with this, so this saves Archeon a turn. Perfect. All right, very nice. Suddenly a uh, suddenly a battle of uh, piles of uh, hobgobs. Wasn't expecting that in the uh, uh, in this particular campaign. No one expects the hobgoblin in inquisition. Anyway, total favor 2.3k worth our time, and obviously we don't actually ha care what happens to this army, but we'll certainly occupy Mount Greyhag. And we'll probably trade it back to right back to the Skaven, but we'll leave them Crookback Mountain. Yeah. All right. Uh, there we go. I'll fight to the battle for Mount Silver Spear between the episodes because this is a waste of time for Archeon, and uh, the giants will die because Auto Resolve hates, really, really hates and giants of any kind. And then we'll move back to Crookback Mountain and re attack it next turn and thereby force them to be our vassal at tier 5, which will be quite nice. Uh, a little bit unfortunate about Mr. Siggy, but what can you do? Uh, whether it be fated that we have him in this campaign, or whether or not we shall have to see if he revives over the next few turns, but if he doesn't, hey, we can make our own Sigvald. A uh, better Sigvald, as in a uh, uh, another lord that can command chaos warriors and all that sort of stuff. Anyway, uh, next time we will also attack Valkia most likely with Azazel because there isn't really much to do here other than go after Belicor and we can't do that until we have somebody sailing on down to Conquata. I suppose we could take this and then immediately sail down to Conquata and then attack him, but by then I think we'll have our Zinshin army up and running. And then we'll be able to do both at the same time, so there's no need to uh, and there's no need to rush that. In addition, Archaon having taken the set will probably still have to move southward towards the Knights of Kalidor territories. It doesn't look like Draj wants to go after them, and I don't want to waste allegiance on having him occupy targets as uh, we need all that allegiance for fancy. Uh, Chaos Dwarf Tech, Kunlun will attack us next turn, and then Kukar will vassalize a Deathmaster Snitch, and Kolek will push into the territory. Um, village all the way to the Red Fortress while Kukar also continues his way. We'll take out Zatan and then we'll start on the Blessed Dread and the Western Provinces as well. Though that'll actually be over the next few episodes. Anyway, more Archaon to come so stay tuned. Don't forget to leave those likes and comments below, especially to Threshold if you're into that sort of thing. All glory to the algorithm and thanks for watching.